So before the video starts, I did want to announce that I just started a brand new podcast with a couple friends called the Millennium Microphone Podcast. This is a podcast going through the original Yu-Gi-Oh! series uh, that aired back in the 2000s. I've never seen it before, so it's kind of like three veterans and one newbie kind of discussing their thoughts and, and how they enjoyed the series. I've had a blast recording it. Uh, it's, it's really fun to talk with a bunch of people that know a whole lot more than I do about a series. So if you're looking for some more Bioroxis content, be sure to uh, go over to that. I'll have a link in the description below as well as a pinned comment. Hey you guys, today we're we'll going to be looking at the new Melody of Memory trailers. I'll start with the short Nintendo trailer before moving on to the official final trailer. I'm only going to briefly touch on some things from the Nintendo trailer since a lot of it is seen in the final trailer as well. The first thing I noticed was this number over some of the enemies you were fighting. This is kind of an HP meter for tougher enemies since as you hit them the counter will go down and they will be hit backwards. They have a different colored lock-on reticle than just normal enemies and we can also see that airborne enemies have blue lock-on reticles. The next interesting thing was the Sea Salt Trio teaming up for the Vector to the Heaven song. Roxas triggers his special move Black Hole which is his limit attack from Days. What's odd though is that this looks to be a completely new animation for him as is this backflip attack Xion does right at the end of their segment. It's really cool to see these characters not being left behind as the series moves forward. Also I really like how the progress bar changes to Roxas instead of staying as Sora. It's a really small detail but it's nice that they thought about it. I pointed this out previously but these crystals trigger special attacks with a triangle prompt. The name of the special attack will appear over your character's head. Next up we get confirmation of Kingdom Hearts 3 songs being added to the game. Some people were unsure if KH3 would get a place in this game with development being so close together. The announcer says that there is a mode called Memory Dive where you play stages from past memories. I wonder if these memory dives are all the levels where you fly in front of cutscenes. The last snippet of gameplay we see is a boss battle against Maleficent from Birth by Sleep. Dark lightning rains down before text appears on the screen saying guard wonderful. It then switches to Sora actually attacking and the staff path has changed to a dark purple color. We see in the final trailer this is something called Dark Zone. It's also really cool to see the environment registering all the notes hit. Next up we have the jukebox option. This categorizes all the music from the various games. It looks like we may be able to sort them in other ways as well. You can favorite the songs you like the most and also choose a random song. It seems like you'll be able to choose which characters appear over the music player since the song playing is from the original Kingdom Hearts game which didn't have the Sea Salt Trio in it. There's also a story archive which will recap all the important story beats. It looks like there are only 36 cutscenes and you'll be able to choose either a specific one or play all of them. There's also this option for a team menu which is your synthesis item shop. In this trailer we also learn that there is a free for all exclusive option for the Switch that supports up to 8 players locally. Zooming in it seems like we will be able to choose different profile pictures during multiplayer matches. In this mode it also looks like you only have 3 lives rather than an actual HP bar. The trailer ends with a cutscene that is shown in the final trailer, so I'll hold off on that. Okay, now let's look at this final trailer. Surprisingly, there weren't as many spoilers as I was expecting. Most of the trailer consisted of gameplay with only a few quick cutscenes. Anyways, the trailer opens with a quick recap of the ending of Kingdom Hearts 3. Sora sealed away Kingdom Hearts, but Kairi states that it was still far from over. At the end of the trailer, the text on screen states that melodies and memories hold the secret of his final plan. This is likely referring to Xehanort, and the scene after this shows Ants and the Wise telling Kairi that such mysteries are beyond their comprehension. I assume they are talking about Sora's disappearance and how they will find him. Kairi wonders if Mickey or Yen Sid knows before Riku interrupts asking if she has any news. We know in the years since Sora has gone missing that Kairi has been sound asleep searching within her heart to find him. This probably means this cutscene in the Melody of Memory trailer is one of the early cutscenes showing Kairi before she falls asleep. It's kind of crazy to think that this game will probably cover the entire year that she is asleep. Anyways, let's move on to gameplay now. The first song shown is simple and clean with shots from the opening of Kingdom Hearts 1. With these arrows pointing in different directions, it makes me think that we will use the D-pad or directional buttons alongside a button input. We then switch to the gummy ship and get a look at the end of the worlds of Kingdom Hearts 1 as well as Castle Oblivion from Chain of Memories and some of the opening worlds of Kingdom Hearts 2. It seems like we will just have one long line of worlds that we travel to. With the different colored orbs shown here, you will probably be able to differentiate between the different types of levels such as these darkened ones being boss battles. On the HUD we can see stars together as well as a back button, a zoom out button, and a dash button. On the far side of the screen we can see this team menu option that we saw previously. As we pass the first Twilight Town we are met with a second Twilight Town, probably nodding to the data Twilight Town that Roxas is in and the real Twilight Town that Sora explores. We can see branching paths up ahead with one going towards the Kingdom Hearts 2 worlds and the other one going to what I assume to be the 358 over 2 days worlds. As the gummy ship gets close to the world we can see that a cleared option is under the world. We've also seen complete underworlds which I'll touch on in a second. First I'm going to draw your attention to the top corner of the screen. 
It looks like there are two songs associated with this world, so each world is going to have multiple songs to clear. Since both songs have been cleared, we get the all clear reward, which is 18 writhing shards. Now in the other corner of the screen, multiple sets of stars appear. We know these green stars are used to open up the Gemi Pathways at the start of the world tour, and I assume we will get the normal yellow stars simply from completing the worlds on different difficulties. The silver stars are actually from completing additional objectives in this world, as we can see from the JP trailer. It's possible that depending on the game the song comes from, we will get different colored stars, though that hasn't been confirmed yet. Anyways, when you select the world, you can see that working together is the second song you can play in this world. A cleared sign appears at the top of the box, and when we complete all the missions for both songs, you will get a complete under the world as seen by the JP trailer. The missions on screen give us a peek into a couple of things. We have items, we can miss aerial enemies, and the crystals on the staff path are abilities. I wonder if this means we will level up and gain new abilities that we can then equip. There may be an ability limit with like 4 or 5 slots, and you'll randomly cycle through these when you hit the ability crystals. Right before the screen fades out, we can get a good look at the play menu. The music notes at the top show which level of difficulty you are playing. It seems like right now there is a beginner mode, a standard one, and a problem mode. Music notes hide what would be the L and R buttons to cycle between the difficulties. I'm not exactly sure what this number in crystal mean, but maybe they are the amount of ability crystals in the level on that difficulty. Below this are the number of times played, the high score, the chain, and what rank you got for this difficulty, and I guess the date you did this. It seems like to clear the world you will need to only beat the level on one difficulty. Even the missions to complete the world seem to not be linked to beating all the difficulties, even though one is linked to at least standard mode with the Ability Crystals mission. I'm not exactly sure what this bar means, but it looks like this level may require you to get a certain amount of excellent ratings to clear it. Beside the play button is an arrow which may cycle this bottom part, since there seems to be two options here. Could this mean that you can create your own party of characters? It may not be, since there is only a single level for your party members. Maybe you can switch between the different trios. At the very bottom is a selection of items. The potion and mega potion will likely heal you, and the bell is an item boost, and this item is an EXP boost. This is explained in the team menu synthesis shop seen later. The last item looks like a completed version of the star shard that Mickey used to travel to other worlds. I think this item will let you skip through a part of the level. The next scene shows the working together level and nobodies as well as some silver rock cartless are your enemies. An ability crystal is triggered and Thundaga is cast at a sniper nobody off the staff path. The scene then switches to Wave of Darkness 1, with Sora casting another Thundaga. This hits an invisible, and a defender can be seen to have a 4 hit counter above his head. Another Thundaga is cast before it switches to Savannah Pride, and Simba joins the battle. There's really not too much to point out here, and this is simply showing that you can fight with other Disney characters. Dimmon Vigor is shown off next with Mulan being a party member. A special item is hit by all 3 of your party members, which triggers a small explosion. The next area is in Hollow Bastion with Beast, and the same item can be seen on the path, except that the Rose is seen, so certain worlds seem to have certain collectibles that can be tied to progression or extra missions. The blue arrows indicate that you need to jump to hit the airborne enemy. All for One is the next level and shows a Dream Meter party with Riku leading the charge before it switches to the Sea Salt Trio. Roxas shoots off a of Fire Aga, and we see a different set of arrows showing that an incoming projectile is coming and needs to be dodged by jumping. The Wayfinder Trio is shown next with Aqua being the leader. She uses her Spellweaver command style finisher when her ability crystal is activated. I wonder if your party members will trigger other abilities if the crystal is in their path. Uh, post edit note, but it looks like the character models will use the original versions and not the final mix recolors. Next up is a boss battle against Maleficent from Birth by Sleep. It's odd that the Wayfinder trio is not leading this fight. I wonder if that means that you can switch between party members. Anyways, right at the beginning you can see Goofy and Donald dodge this dark lightning before Sora dodges this triple cast. This may actually be a free running section where you take over the dodge action instead of hitting a note to dodge. When the scene switches, we see Sora use Ars Arcanum with his ability crystal. The level transitions into the dark zone and the staff color changes to purple. I'm not sure what the difference is since we see Sora attacking Maleficent before going to the dark zone. Kairi's first theme then starts playing, showing different scenes she was in throughout the different games. We then get a look at co op mode as the enemies switch sides during the song. The first ability crystals triggered have Sora casting a Kiraga on Riku as Riku does Dark Splicer. The next set has Sora doing R's as Riku heals him. During co-op you will have separate chains as well as a separate score that feeds into an overall score, so I wonder if this will factor into the main campaign and you'll get to save your individual score and progress the main story during co-op mode. Also I really like how the Heartless spawn in front of you and then run down the staff as a kind of fake out attack. Next up is a versus battle. I've already talked through all of this in my last trailer breakdown for this game, but we have some new tricks that are triggered. Tiny targets will likely make your opponent's enemies smaller and harder to see. Interference causes the enemies to fly onto the front of the screen when they die, and Harsh Judge probably makes it to where only excellent ratings will give you points. Also, it's a little hard to see, but these Heartless shoot out seeds that you have to jump over. 
I can see versus battles getting insane with some of the harder levels. The trailer then moves on to showing some of the other options in the game. The synthesis shop is the team menu option we have seen before. Also the items we see are the ones from the play menu when starting a song. We have a potion, a mega potion, an item boost, an exp boost, and a summoning star. Right now you'll get an exp bonus to your moogle level for synthesizing a potion. Anyways there are 5 windows here, an item window, a music stage key window, and 3 others. The memory dives seem to be locked behind synthesizing and you'll only be able to play through them by progressing the story and getting more synthesis material. These will be selectable in the track selection menu rather than on the world tour map. Next up we get a look at the museum menu. The first selection is your collection. You'll probably unlock character models here, and the card here in the team menu probably lets you unlock them. The story archive is next, which you've already seen previously in the Nintendo trailer. The theater is what I assume to be the story cutscenes from Melody of Memory, and the jukebox is where all the songs you've unlocked will be at. Another post edit, but I'm really interested to see what the days encoded songs are. I'm really interested to see how the original song sounds when not playing through DS. Lastly, records probably list out all of your achievements and high scores. Right at the end of the trailer, the logo glitches out and we get three quick shots. A young Kyrie is confirmed to be the one in the mysterious pods, and Sora blankly stares at the screen before the release date is revealed. I wonder if this is actually Sora, or really just an illusion. In the announcement trailer we see Kyrie saying that she won't let this cloaked figure walk away, even if they are just a memory or illusion. This makes me almost positive that this is what the Sora we see in the final trailer is. And that is all I have for you guys today. Sorry I couldn't get this out sooner, my graduate program just started back up and it's been a little tough to find time to break this trailer down. I hope that I was able to show you something though that other trailer analysis videos missed. Also, apologies if I sound like I'm racing through this. <laughs> I, I really want to get the video done and get it out for you guys. Uh, so apologies, I guess, if this was like super quick or like I threw a ton at you. But anyways, thank you to my patrons who support me. The names will be on screen right now. If you want to see my breakdowns early or schedule the breakdowns I want to do for each month, head over to my Patreon. If you enjoyed this, click the card on screen to see my announcement trailer breakdown. Subscribe or share this and I will see you in the next video.